Just about everyone who has ever tried using a hand plane has at one time or another experienced skitter, where the plane jumps across the board, leaving little ridges or ripples at the beginning of the cut. Some folks like to use the term chatter interchangeably with skitter. However, I like to define the two terms differently based upon some information that I read several decades ago, written by the late Jeff Gorman. Skitter occurs when the plane engages and disengages harmonically across the surface of the wood and kind of skips across the surface of the wood like a stone skipped on a pond. Skitter is typically easier to diagnose than chatter because skitter usually only happens at the beginning of the cut. Once the plane is fully engaged on the board, skitter usually goes away. However, chatter will typically continue over the entire length of the board. The cause of skitter is usually going to be blade sharpness, blade projection, or planing technique. So as we've seen so far with all the other issues that we've been diagnosing, the first thing to do to combat skitter is to sharpen the blade and set it for a lighter cut. Once the blade has been resharpened and set for a lighter cut, make sure that you're practicing good planing mechanics. You wanna make sure that you're putting enough downward pressure over the front of the plane at the start of the cut. If you don't put enough downward pressure on the knob at the start of the cut, what happens is the plane will har harmonically engage and disengage as you go across the wood because it tends to tip down at the start of the cut. Once the plane is fully engaged, then the skitter will go away. So to keep the plane from skittering, make sure that when you start the cut, you have plenty of pressure over the front knob. And again, set it for a lighter cut. Keep that pressure over the front. And the skitter should go away. Now, chatter is a different problem entirely. It's caused by an unsupported blade that flexes during the cut and causes the blade to engage and disengage and causes a similar ripple pattern to skitter. However, chatter will typically occur over the full length of the board, even when you're taking a very light cut. Chatter is a very common problem in old wooden planes like this, because the wood moves and it can create bedding issues as the plane gets older and the wood continues to expand and contract. Chatter is a much less common issue in iron planes than skitter. However, if your plane does in fact have a problem with chatter, it's not going to be improved simply by sharpening the iron or having better planing technique. Because the blade itself is flexing in use, blade support is going to have to be addressed. If you're absolutely sure that what you're experiencing is chatter and not skitter, there are two things to check. The simplest to address is the fit and tightness of the lever cap. If the lever cap on your plane is so loose that it requires very little effort to open it or lock it down, then it's probably too loose. The cap should be tight enough that it holds the blade securely to the frog, yet still allows for adjustment of the blade for depth of cut as well as lateral adjustment without unlocking the lever cap. To adjust the snugness of the lever cap, first unlock it and then tighten the lever cap screw until it just barely makes contact with the lever cap itself. You want to be able to remove and install the lever cap without touching the screw but it shouldn't be super difficult to do. So you may need to play with it a little bit to make sure it's not too tight like that. Then when you lock it down, it should take a little bit of effort, but you should still be able to move the adjustments. With the lever cap, properly adjusted, check that you don't have a gap anywhere between the blade and the frog. If you do, you may need to check for the next issue, which is a frog that isn't flat. 
to check the frog, we'll, we'll take the blade out. We'll remove the lever cap screw. And then I'm going to take the frog out of the plane. Now, I'll use a straight edge, and I'm going to check the frog against the light source, and I'll check it along its length, across its width, and diagonally. And what I'm checking to make sure is that there's no hump in the center of the frog, because if there's a hump in the center of the frog, chatter is almost guaranteed. To fix a frog with a hump in the center, we need to lap it flat. So first I'm going to remove the depth adjusting wheel because that's going to be in the way because we need to be able to move the yoke out of the way. You may actually have to remove the yoke entirely if it's causing a problem. If you need to remove the yoke from your frog because the front edge of it sticks up above the surface of the frog, you're going to need a pin punch and a hammer. So the side, in the side of the frog, there's a pin that holds the yoke in place. You're going to need to drive that pin out in order to remove the yoke. Now with the yoke removed, we can lap the face of the frog. Now, you also want to be careful of the lateral adjusting washer here because that actually sits above the face of the frog. So what I'm going to do is keep the lateral adjuster off the surface because I really don't want to drive that pin out. So you need to be very careful here not to rock the frog at all. You want to take your time doing this. And the marker is really going to help judging progress here. So you can see I was a little high in the middle, but for the most part, it's really not too, too bad, perhaps a little low here. So I'll lap this until it's flat. Before we can reassemble the plane, we need to put the yoke back in. You'll have to excuse my hands. But we're going to set it so that the yoke, the curve of the yoke, faces the frog. Set it in place. Get that pin started. And then we'll have to use our punch to punch it back through. Make sure you have the yoke lined up so the pin goes through the hole. Then with the yoke installed, we can put the adjusting wheel back on. Make sure those ears engage with the adjusting wheel. Otherwise the adjustments won't work. And now we can put the frog back in the plane. Tighten up those screws. We want to put this screw back in loosely. Put the blade set back and then readjust the tightness of our lever cap. So now, with a properly supported, freshly sharpened blade and a properly set lever cap, even planing very hard woods like this ash should really be no problem.